This is slide three of our 1930s unit. Um, a New Deal. When Roosevelt was sworn in, his inauguration speech uh, that he gave, he promised a new deal for every American. Uh, I guess because clearly the old one that they had was terrible. Um, it had led to nothing but unemployment and um, poverty, hunger, homelessness, everything else. Uh, so Roosevelt, unlike Hoover, says that he is going to use the government to help the common man, uh, to help everybody. Uh, Hoover wanted to leave it up to big business to solve the problem. Uh, Roosevelt says, big business, you had your chance for the last uh, three years. You failed, so now it's government's turn to try to fix the problems. One of the first things that uh, Roosevelt says government is going to do is to declare a bank holiday. Um, he closes the banks for one week. If you'll recall, one of the problems people had was that uh, banks were closing, they lost their life savings, everybody was rushing to the banks to get their money out while they could. Roosevelt has to restore confidence in the banks. If a country's banking system uh, completely collapses, the country will too. Uh, so the first thing he has to do is restore people's confidence in the banks. So he shuts them down. People can't go get their money out. He closes the banks for a week just to give people a chance to calm down. and says, everybody take a breath and relax. This will get better. And it does. It actually works. Um, bank withdrawals uh, greatly um, reduced after the bank holiday and the banks reopened. Every president has a first hundred days in office. They're known as the 100 Days, okay? and Roosevelt called his his 100 Days Congress. Okay? This is when most new legislation gets passed. The first 100 days of a president's term, he passes more legislation than he will the rest of his term. Okay? It's because he's got a lot of support. People are behind him. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of uh, confidence in the new president, and Roosevelt especially. So most uh, of Roosevelt's early work is done in the first 100 days um, of his first term. Uh, they cranked out program after program. All of those programs fell into what Roosevelt called one of his three R's. Um, it stood for relief, recovery, and reform. So let's say a word about each of those three R's here, first of all. Uh, again, each of the programs that he created fell into one of these three different types of programs. So first, relief. Relief programs um, are meant to provide immediate help. It is immediate action taken to stop the fall of the economy. Right? We're doing something right now that will provide help for people right away. So relief, immediate action, immediate help. The second R is recovery. These are um, temporary programs to restart um, consumer demand, to restart the need for people to buy things. These are temporary jobs. Uh, recovery jobs aren't meant to be a new career. They're meant to get a few dollars in your pocket right now so you can go spend that. Um, recovery programs might have... Um, employed people to shovel snow in front of City Hall or um, paint the new uh, courthouse building or rake leaves down at uh, the local park, something like that. They were temporary jobs meant to get people some money in their hands so they can spend it and get the economy going again. So those are recovery programs. The third R uh, is reform. These are permanent programs permanent changes uh, to existing programs to prevent another depression from happening. So these are long-term goals, long-term projects uh, to change the way the economy works so we don't end up in another mess like this. So relief, recovery, and reform. Um, one of the biggest challenges that Roosevelt is going to face is changing the mindset of a people. A lot of people have believed this was the end of America. We couldn't recover from this. One of the things he's got to do is convince them that we can. 
So Roosevelt, every now and then, would go on the radio and deliver what he called a fireside chat. People would sit around their radios in their living rooms next to their fireplaces and listen to the president talk directly to them. This is the first time anything like this had happened. Um, And Roosevelt would go on the radio and talk about the latest programs that have been created um, and how they were going to help. He would tell people where to go to look for jobs, what sort of new jobs were going to be created, and how the people could get those jobs. Uh, And it was meant to reassure the people that things are going to be okay, that we'll get through this, that we can survive this. And it was very reassuring to the people uh, to hear the president speaking directly to them. Roosevelt did a series of 30 different addresses in the first uh, uh, couple of terms as president. Uh, 30 different times he goes on the radio and addresses the public directly. That doesn't seem like a big deal to us nowadays with all our modern communication, but back then that was unheard of. So it it was a big step that Roosevelt took. Uh, Lastly here, as uh, the first thing we mentioned here on this slide was the fact that Roosevelt's got to restore confidence in the banks. So let's talk about the banks here for a bit uh, and a couple of the programs that are created by Roosevelt. The first one that he passes is called the Glass-Steagall Banking Reform Act. Glass-Steagall Banking Reform Act. Uh, Now, it does a couple of really big things here. The first one is incredibly important. It's called the FDIC. That stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Roosevelt, again, has to convince people to trust the banks. So what he does is he creates the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation to guarantee your bank deposit. The federal government is going to insure your deposit in the bank up to $5,000. So if you put $500 in the bank, the federal government is going to guarantee that whenever you want your $500 back, you can get it. Before every bank ran on its own, now that's all going to change. The banks are going to be backed up by the federal government. They're going to insure your deposit. He's got to convince people to trust the banks. And they do. Bank deposits start going back up again. Once people are told that, we promise, we guarantee, you can get your money out whenever you want, people start putting it back in. And the last thing he does here as part of the Glass-Steagall Banking Reform Act is develop something called managed currency. The government, not big business, the government is going to be in charge of managing the economy of this country, managing the currency of this country. And one of the ways that Roosevelt is going to do that is through inflation. He's got to get more money into people's hands. People were hoarding gold. People were hoarding gold. They weren't trading it in for money. Roosevelt needs them to get money, and he needs them to spend that money. So one surefire way to get people to turn in their gold for money is to... Pay them more for that gold. Gold was currently, at that time, trading for $21 an ounce. So if you had an ounce of gold, you could trade it in and get $21. Roosevelt says the government will pay you $35 for your gold. So he's making it much more valuable. With gold prices up, people turned in their gold. Now, it cost the government a little up front, but it got money into people's hands, and they started spending it. And that's what we need to do to get the economy going again. So this is part of Roosevelt's New Deal. The New Deal is his domestic program, his way to fix this country. We're going to talk a lot more about the New Deal, a lot more programs, uh, but this is just a start. So that's it for this one.